Welcome back to Call the Damn Leads, the show by sales professionals for sales professionals. I'm your host, Drewby Wilson. With more than two decades in sales, I've seen the good, the bad, the ugly, and all kinds of crazy shit in between when it comes to sales and this industry. Now, I'm bringing you this show to tell your stories and bring some tactical, fun guidance to the sales industry and get out there and let our community know, hey, you're not alone. Sales can be a grind, it can be crazy, it can make you rich, it can make you poor, and in between, we have a lot of fun, we see some crazy stuff, and today's guest is someone I'm very, very excited to have on. He is like my brother from another mother. We didn't know this, but from the first conversation we had, we built a relationship that will last a lifetime, and funny enough, as we released our books... We realized that we had a very, very similar upbringing, almost to the point where we could have been brothers if we'd have lived in the same town. Instead, <laughs> now we're brothers for life, doing it this way, man. What's up, Bill Baker? How are you, brother? What's up, man? The man formerly known as Drewby, a.k.a. Andrew. Fucking metaphor. Sticking to it. <laughs> hey, we're running with it, baby. We got to do what we got to do. You know, meta verification, they wanted me to, to, to be real. My my real name is Andrew, but my friends call me Drewby, and that's what we're here for, hanging out with friends. So, Bill, for the folks who don't know you, man, we've been in, in oh shit, we've been friends now for close to five years, but tell us a little bit about where you're from, what you do, and how you got into sales. Yeah, so I come from a construction background, specifically kitchen and bath remodeling type situation. My grandfather owned his own business as I was growing up. My uncle was in the business with him, and then I just kind of caught on to the point where I eventually left high school and went to work for my grandpa full time learning um, trim carpentry and remodeling. So that was like majority of my kind of upbringing. And then my 20s was kind of up and down with deciding what I really wanted to do. And then, um, you know, one day we had kids and my, my purpose just kind of like came out of me, quote unquote, with the kids. <laughs> and uh Decided that I, <laughs> there it is, <laughs> legitimately decided I really want to do this for the rest of my life. Like I, I got to do this um, because it's for something greater than just myself and started a, a trim carpentry company, which then led into, I became partners in a flooring company, which then became, I had the opportunity to acquire a countertop business. And then I walked away from the flooring company and now I focus all my time on kitchen and bath remodeling and granite and quartz countertops. I didn't really seek out sales. I don't have sales experience prior to owning my business. I've always been a grunt laborer, you know, stereotypical tradesman. But when you start a business, it needs to sell something to somebody. So I had no choice but to just crush it into sales. I'm very introverted. I don't like to talk to people. But, some, you know, it, again, back to my purpose, it came out of me. Boom! And I had no choice but to, to do sales the best I could. And it brought me from basically nothing. When I first started my company, I told my accountant, I want to make, or I think I'll make 50 grand a year. I'll be cool with that. Well, I went on to do several hundred thousand that year. And then within a three-year period, we were doing a million dollars a year plus. And Come we're on. several million a year now at this point. And, you know, here we are. So Here we are, that's, baby. That's, that's sales. In a nutshell. <laughs> no, well, it. and you it's know what? Sales, if anyone wants of, to know more, yeah. they can go and read your book, and they can buy it on Amazon. What's the name of the That's book? Right. The book is called Rebel with a Cause, because I used to be a rebel without the cause, and I would just do a lot of fucked up shit. Yeah, back to the purpose uh, and my cause. <clears throat> so here That's we are, it, baby. Rebel with a Cause. Bill Baker, go get that on Amazon. Read his story. He's got an amazing mm -hmm. journey that he's been through, and you'll see it. Um, and, and one of the things that I love, too, is seeing that up and down, knowing that there's so many of us out there that have a skill set, and, and tradesmen especially are known for this, right? You're great at swinging a hammer. You're great at doing trim. You're, the thing yes. that you do, you are awesome, but you, you maybe you know riff a little bit with management. You, you and the owner maybe don't get along, or you start to realize at some point you want to have oh, control never. of your life. <laughs> Yeah, you, you want to be able to do yeah. your thing your way, and that's what leads you into having to sell. And so you got to go and learn to hustle, and you got to build this up. And, Bill, you've been an amazing example of what it means to go from working with your hands, working in your business, to truly now working on your business. And one of the things that we kind of joke about and, and we've shared, and, and this is why I'm excited to have you come on, we have crazy-ass sales stories to tell, right? 
So give me one of them crazy ass stories that you have working in the trades and, and building your business. This was about a few years ago. Um, we were maybe a year into the flooring company. Again, I was partners with somebody else. Each of our skill sets complemented each other. In the flooring company, he knew flooring. I brought the remodel and trim aspect to the business. That was my expertise. So we started offering like cabinetry and, and stuff through that business from my expertise. So we had a customer. He was, uh, I don't know, not old. Because as, as I start getting older, I have a hard, I have a hard time saying the word old. Um, I'm almost 40. He was probably in his 50s, whatever, older man. Apparently, in his younger years, he used to be a wrestler. It was very interesting. But anyways, we haggle the deal. We go back and forth. We come to terms. And back then, we were still kind of haggling, like, cash discounts, which I don't really do that anymore. I'll maybe round to the 100, but I don't do cash discounts. So this guy's haggling us for a cash discount. I'm like, yeah, man. Like, back then, I was like, yeah, cash, I'll take 80% off. Just pay me cash, you know? It's like, just friend of cash. So he's like, okay, we came, came to terms. He was going to pay in cash. He was going to, he was going to meet us specifically. We made a special trip to the office on, it was either evening or a weekend. It was, we were off, but he met us after hours and I forget how much it was. It was somewhere between five to $7,000, maybe $8,000 that he was going to bring in cash. So like naturally myself and my business partner were there. Cause as soon as he leaves, we're divvying up the cash, you know, we're like, Hey, all right, four for you, four for you. See you Monday. I mean, no, we don't do that. <laughs> so the guy comes in and he comes in with a grocery bag. So he brings a grocery bag in. I'm looking at it thinking like, what is that? Like his wrestling pads or what is, what's he doing right now? So he comes in, we finalize the deal. He signs it. He opens up his little grocery bag. He says, how much was it? And we said, whatever it was. He says, okay. He opens up his grocery bag and he pulls out like eight grand in fives and singles. And I'm like, what the fuck? What what are we going to do with this? So now we didn't have a cash counter or nothing. So we're like, you know, 5, 10, 15, 16, 17. <laughs> Count out all this cash looking like drug lords on our desk, you know, for this guy. It was wild. I've never had anyone pay in singles and fives for that kind of dollar amount job. But it was very sketchy, <laughs> to say the least. It, it makes you that wonder. Was, that was probably. <clears throat> was he maybe also a yeah, I mean, this dude's... in the evening? Right. So I'm like, what kind of wrestler were you like a jello wrestler or like, did you wrestle ladies in bikinis or something and just kept the tips? I don't know. It, no, that was, that was wild. Um, I've never had that. That's a, that was a one-off instance. I've never had that happen again in such small bills for a large denomination like that. Well, you know, I'll take with it. as cash good as cash. you look, I'm, <laughs> I'm a little surprised. That's the only time you've had, you know, that many small bills thrown at you, Bill, you know, but you know, yeah. Uh, hey, yeah, it's, it's well, cool. no, I didn't say that was the first time. <laughs> hey, now we're talking. Um, you know, that's, that's one of the craziest <laughs> stories though. And, and I love that in sales, these are the things that happen, especially for like a young business owner, entrepreneur, that first time you go and you collect a significant sum of money like that, you go, damn, do I need to start carrying a piece? Do I need to get like a bodyguard or, yeah. you know, I'll never forget, man. When I worked at the furniture store, you know, we work during tax season, and so most people just swipe their credit card and just were like, boom, 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 H&R yeah. Block, H&R Block all day long. And I had <laughs> stayed late, and I was working, and we're walking out, and I, was, I looked over at the owner, and he and I were probably the same age, maybe 25, 26 at the time. And he's got a pistol, a briefcase, and uh, handcuffs on. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? And he's like... I'm not getting robbed leaving this motherfucker, man. This is my money. And I was just like, what do you got, fucking 10 grand in there, dude? Jeez, oh, Pete. But, yeah. again, I, I, at the time, that's all, you know, 10 grand is a lot of money. It's not that it's not. It was just so interesting to me to think, like, yeah. that first time you start getting them big dollars and where you go through that, man, it's it's a change of the game. And that's the level up that we go through from, from young sales hustler to yeah. real business owner. I mean, and some of us young hustlers saw lots of cash in the early days when we were doing things we weren't supposed to. Different kind of conversation for Absolutely. another day. But yep. you still learn and you grow. And that's one of the things I love about sales, especially is the opportunity to continue learning, to continue growing. One of my mentors says, you know, sales is basically a personal development pain with or a personal development with a pay plan attached, because as you continue to get and be better, you make more money. 
So, Bill, this is something I want to ask you, man. As you've progressed in your career, as you've gotten better, if you had to say, you know, one thing was your secret weapon when it comes to sales, what would you say that is? Be likable. And mm. Just be a real person. That's probably been – and then you know, I was just telling you before we got on here, I made a sale – in between doing shows right now, just by being a nice guy. I mean, I was, I related to the guy. He was also a tradesman. Um, he's gotten other quotes, you know, and at the end of the day, I just leveled with him. I'm like, look, I do this too. I found that my most success in sales is just being myself, being real, treating them with the same respect I would treat anyone else and be likable you know like they say find find things within their home that you could relate to and start a conversation with it oh you like you like that sports team yeah they did pretty good huh whether you like them or not just say something that you could relate to them on you know and you start building that rapport so that's a long story but short end just be likable just be true to yourself don't be full of shit don't lie just be real and be likable and that's it. Man, and that's, that's why so, that's why I've been so successful as a salesman. That's something that's really it's easy to overlook for people I think that get into sales. I think they have to be this slick talk, fast, you know, like super smart, know the answer to every question. And I've personally experienced that not knowing the answer has helped me out a lot more than saying I knew the answer and not knowing it. <laughs> uh, because that level yes. of trust is so big, man. And and especially in the situation you're just talking about, right? Hey, um, I went to a house of a guy who's in trade, so he knows like what he's talking about and you leveled with him, kept it very mm -hmm. real and it created an opportunity for a relationship. And who knows what that could turn into in the future where maybe you need his trade for something. And then you're like, Hey man, remember we chatted, you were telling me you do this. Like, I need a guy for that. What do you, are you available? That's the kind I, of growth and opportunity that's that possible. Up. See, exactly. You're a smart guy. Yeah. Bro. That's why I like yeah, it. I I brought that up to him. I said, oh, you're an electrician? Do you, you have a card? Who do you work for? What kind of work do you do? And then all of a sudden he said, you know what? Do you have some more of your cards? Because I'm, I'm doing a project for a guy and he needs this. And then uh, when we sell this house, because they're just they're fixing up their kitchen right now to sell it. And they're moving to a new house. And he said, you know what? Once we're done with this, I want to pass my cards to this project I'm working on. And I also want to redo the kitchen in our new home. So just by those tactics alone i got not only his job i got potentially two more out of it damn no ads and spend. It, <laughs> so all right well this is great because one of the questions i'd like to ask on this show is you know when it comes to sales there's a lot of misconceptions a lot of like things that people are kind of like i don't know or sales guys are slimy or they're you know whatever one thing that I think is a big myth in sales, and I'd love to know your take on this, is that there, there's not enough for everybody. People have this scarcity mindset, and if you're in like you know the contracting business, that you don't want to share deals with other contractors, or you don't want to work, you know, you don't want them in your community or whatever. There's this like weird. I understand competition mindset, and yet I also yeah. have seen where contractors and tradesmen in any industry can come together and create massive massive success so in your opinion do you think that you know competition is an issue or is it something that you thrive in i think it can go it can go both ways there's definitely you still need to be careful with who you talk to and what you say and you got to remember that even if you do decide to work together or help each other out you're still competition at the end of the day and money will make people do crazy things so the second somebody feels threatened or, or you, you give off a certain vibe to someone that maybe you're working with, but through your competition, money just does different things to people. So if they feel like you're dipping into their pot, they might start doing things, resentful things to you unknowingly in that situation. Now, we there's certain things in, my, in what we do that is okay for competition. So like, I don't want small little jobs. We want big 30, 40, 50 plus thousand dollar remodel jobs. And so, the lower end competition that does the smaller jobs, that's good. That if they're not able, as long as they're not able to take on the bigger jobs that we take on, you know, finding a one man show kind of thing where it's like somebody calls us and says, Hey, I just want to change out one cabinet in my bathroom. Well, I'm not interested in that, but I got a guy that will, then he can go change out that vanity for a couple hundred bucks. At the same time, he might go there and they say, I need a whole new kitchen remodel and a rendering and a design. Do you do that? He might be like, well, no, I don't do that, but I know a guy and then toss it back. So 
situations like that that works for us i wouldn't be able to work with someone that does the exact same stuff as us because like i said money makes people do funny things and when times get tough people get scrappy and resentful and deceitful and all these different things so when times are good they're good but when times get slow kind of like they are now for a lot of people if someone's short on money and they got my contacts and my leads they might start doing things to keep money in their pocket despite how whatever we had set up prior so no matter what you do even working with a small time guy because i used to be a small time guy i was that one man show right then i got bigger and started chasing these bigger jobs so you still got to be careful with who you talk to and what you say to them you got to remember they could be coming for you and if they work and outgrind you it might take a couple years but they might catch up to you i've caught up and i've already exceeded who i used to work for as just an employee carpenter you know now i've dipped into his market share if you will and it's going to happen but you just got to be careful with what you say and I, my favorite line from um Oh, I can't think of what it's called, but it's with John Travolta. And he says, get shorty. It's called get shorty. And he says to the one guy, he says, never say any more than you have to, if that. And I take that advice in a lot of things I do, whether it be sales. Don't talk yourself out of a sale by running your mouth. Don't say too much to a competitor or someone you're trying to establish some sort of business with, but not give too much information. You know, like you're not buddies. Don't give all your information out. Say as much as you need to say that they need to know and work with it from there. Don't just spew like, hey, we're buddies now. Let me tell you my whole life. And then they're like, huh, so you struggle with this, huh? That's where I could jump in and do better than you. And then before you know it, you're the small guy and he's the big guy. So the line from Get Shorty, never say any more than you have to, if that. That's that's, that's my, a another sales advice, line that man. I keep to heart. I, I love it, and you know, yeah. I, I I can see where you're coming from. I, I definitely feel like for myself, and for a lot of the businesses I work with, and I know you coach and work with a lot of you know business owners and entrepreneurs as well. I, I love the vertical integration and the idea of being able to say, "Hey, that's not a job I do. Here's a guy for that," and then having the core values and knowing that, "Hey, we're going to operate in this way, and we only roll with people in this core value and you know, mindset." And, you know, on occasion, you do learn that someone doesn't quite have the core values that they thought they did. And that's an unfortunate scenario. And, and that's also life. That's yeah. part of growing. That's part of learning. That's really where you start to decipher who your, your, your lifelong friends are and who those acquaintances are that you're going to do business with for a season and then continue to move on and bless them and say, hey, I, I appreciate it and I'm so grateful for it. And yet it's time for us to move in a different direction. Bill, you've always been someone who I've seen really take the time to pour into your community and to help others and to help the little guy, right? That one man show that's trying to get their jump because you know that feeling. We, again, we, we you talk about it in your book. If you guys are listening, go get his book on Amazon. It is a great story about the overcoming from you know being that one man show to really being able to help and build not just a team for yourself, but I mean, I know you employ a number of people. You're helping the community, giving back. <laughs> Like, that's a big deal, man, and I, I want you to know I'm proud of you for it because I know your story, and anyone who reads it is also going to see what that looks like. So with that said, man, I don't want to take all your time. I know that you're a busy guy. You did a radio show this morning. You're closing deals. You're here with me now. It's like, bro, I'm so excited to see how much you've grown and how it continues. One thing I always like to ask, though. Right? Maybe someone's new to sales. They're just getting started in the industry. Maybe they're a tradesman that's like, man, I'm tired of working for this asshole. I want to go get my own thing started. <laughs> but they know they need to figure out sales. What piece of advice would you give them early on? On um, sales or just getting started? Sales, getting started in their business, kind of, I mean, it's a twofer, really. Yeah. I mean, the sales skills will come as long as your fire within, you let it out. Like I said, I was introverted. I was quiet. I didn't talk to nobody. I wouldn't even look at you. Like I would look this way and talk and I would not, if I caught eyes with you, I'd look away. I, like that was me. Like, don't talk to me. I won't talk to you and we're cool. And it wasn't really until defining what my purpose was. Like I knew I wanted to be a carpenter. I knew I wanted to start a business, but I've, I've done that and failed throughout my, my teens and my twenties and everything. I've started and failed but it was just me and I didn't give a shit if I failed. I just pick it up and do it again. 
And so really like the number one thing, the driving force for me is really just it, for me is my kids. And that might be different for everybody else. People might not have kids, but really figure out what it is you want and go after it and define your purpose. And what the hell are you waking up every day and doing this for? There's times today, I'm seven or so years in business right now, successful business. Um, after failing a bunch of times before, I still, when, when times feel tough, I look at my kids or I'll see a picture of them or I'll come home and see them and I'll look at them and I'll instantly get reminded again. If I, you know, we're not, every day is not great. There's days where I'll get upset, sad, mad, depressed, not to like a crazy depressed level, but you just feel down on yourself. Like, why are things not working this week? Why, are, why did this happen today? And then I remind myself of my purpose being my kids and I see my kids and it almost bring me to tears. And I'm like, I'll be like, oh, God damn it. That's why I'm doing it. I'm going to go kick ass again tonight, tomorrow, whatever, and get back mm -hmm. at it. And then I re and it re-sparks that, that fire within me to go out and kill it and, and control the controllables, basically. Like, if things are going bad or slow or you got problems, control what you can control and move on. The rest will fall in line. Just control what you can and remind yourself why you're doing it. I mean, it took me years to figure that out. And I started reading books. I never read books prior to starting a business. I started reading books and I find out like, oh, we do kind of think alike. And this is the right thing, the right mindset that I have now to continue moving forward. Because I, when I failed or came near failure in business before, I would just give up because I had nothing pushing me to push at it and do better. So I just be like, ah, I quit. Same with when I had jobs. I would just quit a job because I didn't I had a bad day. Like, no, nah, I quit. I'm not coming in tomorrow. So really just defining that purpose, getting that passion going and getting that fire in your belly, man, and just letting it out. Don't be scared. That's it. <laughs> Don't be scared. Yeah. Don't be I mean, scared. I can go on, Maybe but... that's it. <laughs> Don't be well, scared. Well, I mean, here's the truth. Like, you're going to be scared. That's part of it, right? When you make a big decision, when yes. you make a change, when you go all in, like, there's going to be some things that you're going to be scared of. And that's part of what makes you think in a better fashion, right? You think smarter because you're like, well probably can't fuck around too far because you know now i got kids or i've got these responsibilities and i don't want to be the guy that that shirked that responsibility and bill man you've been an amazing example i'm so grateful to be doing life with you so proud of everything that you've accomplished since our first conversation i mean you've got a book you've got amazing business you've got an amazing family really really excited to see you continue on that journey and for anyone who's listening if you haven't already gone to Amazon and got his book, make sure you go get it. Rebel with a cause, Bill Baker. And then if they wanted to find you online, you know, see some of the stuff you got going on, what's the best way for them to find you? Yeah, so I got all my stuff on a link tree. It's basically just the, the link slash or dot tr slash Bill Baker. And you'll see all my business, my personal stuff, Facebooks, YouTubes, Instagrams, all that stuff. All the good socials. Well, hey, man, we'll make sure to link that. We'll put everything down in the show notes for everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you again for being here with me, man. I really, really appreciate it. And if you guys are here, if you like the show, make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure you share it out on social media with all your friends. Tag us at Call the Damn Leads. And if you have a crazy sales story, right, if you're in this industry, you've definitely had some crazy shit go on. I want to bring you on the show. I want to share your story Head over to callthedamnleads.com forward slash podcast. Check out the notes. Drop your information. Send me a little bit about what you've got going on. And let's bring you on the show and share. Because sales is the greatest industry in the world. It literally allows you to write your own paycheck. Woo. I want to make you the same <laughs> possibilities. Go on. Share your, short, share your story. Bring them in. Bill, we'll see you guys on the next one. Yeah.